Hi, OMSD teachers and support staff. Today, I'm going to share with you how to use Words Their Way, Word Sorts in your UA or intervention classrooms as an independent task for students to do while you're pulling small groups. Word Sorts are a great collaborative activity that you can use with your students in order to help them strengthen their spelling and phonics skills while you pull small groups. Okay, before I show you how to use word sorts, I wanted to briefly talk to you about why word sorts are such a great activity for students to do independently while you're pulling small groups. They are in a game-like format that is fun and engaging for all students. They are differentiated and tailored to each student's specific needs. They provide opportunities for oral language development and peer interaction. They also incorporate all four language skills, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And finally, they are collaborative and teachers will be able to hold students accountable for the work that they produce independently while the teacher can't be there to monitor the work. I should, yeah, and I, I, I will try to keep my volume. So in order to use word sorts with your students, you're going to start with a quick spelling test to assess students' individual needs. And if you're doing this in your own class, you'll give the same spelling test to all of your students. Um, if you are giving it to your intervention class, you can also give it to all students at the same time. Uh, so it's really nice because you won't have to meet with students one on one to identify where they're at. You can just give a quick spelling test in order to identify where they are. And then uh, the second thing you're going to do after you give that spelling test in order to assess students individual needs, you're going to score the test and then group the students in order uh, to partner them up with each other uh, for students who have like needs. Then you're going to teach the game whole class to students so that everyone understands what's expected. And then the last thing um, you're going to do is implement the word sorts in your classroom and track student progress and adjust them as needed as the students continue to make growth in their different spelling development. So I'm going to show you each step individually now um, and really break down for you what you're going to do um, when implementing word sorts in your classroom. So this is the spelling inventory. Here's an example of a, an intervention classroom. Um, this is taken from a first grade intervention class. And you'll see that the teacher administered a short spelling test to their entire class. And this teacher uh, decided to only give the first seven words because it was the beginning of the school year with her intervention group. And you'll see that each student wrote their own individual um, words on a piece of paper. So just like any other uh, little spelling test. And you're going to encourage the students to spell the words the best they can um, by writing the sounds that they hear. So it's really important that students try to write at least something for each word um, by saying the sounds that they hear. So there's two different tests that you can choose from. Uh, typically for intervention, you'll use the primary test. If you have students that do very well on the primary test, you may want to also give them the elementary test in order to get more information about their developmental spelling stage. Uh, there's also an upper elementary test that's typically used with middle school and high school students that you could access online if you need to. So taking a look at this primary test, you'll see that it actually tells you here um, that you may want to stop if you are assessing kindergarten students um, or if you notice as you're walking around that students um, are struggling with spelling um, at least five of these words correctly. It doesn't hurt the students to give them all 26 words, but really thinking about your particular students and how many words um, you'd like to start with. Typically uh, in first grade in my general classroom, I would give the first 10. In my third grade classroom, I would give all 26. So thinking about that um, and how many words you want to start with, you're going to give this test to students uh, each trimester in order to check in with where they're at with their spelling and phonics 
uh, stage. And if you're an intervention teacher, you can give this test anytime you get a new student or at the trimester in order to assess the current students that you have. Uh, you also see on this page the elementary test and all of the resources will be included after this video where you can click on the link in order to access them. But this is the elementary test so you can see the words are a little bit harder. So thinking about your particular students, which test would be the right test for you. And then after you give the test to students, the next step is to use this scoring sheet in order to assess um, where each student is at. And so it's really important that you um, print one of these sheets out for all of your students. So I'm gonna be using and walking you through this example. And basically students are going to, um, once you have their scores, you're gonna put their name at the top and then you're going to go through each word and you're going to circle the sounds that they got correct. And then if they missed a sound, you're going to highlight that sound or that letter. And then you wanna make sure you, that you don't count reversals. So if they put a D, um, they put a B instead of a D, um, you can mark it there, but you don't mark that one wrong. So same thing here, when the student was writing Rob, you'll see uh, that he wrote a D instead of a B. You'll notice for number five, the word was hope, but the student wrote a V. So I just put a V here and then highlighted that one um, as being incorrect. So you'll notice that um, out of the seven words that this teacher gave, this student was able to get six out of seven. So most of the beginning consonants, most of the, um, or all of the final consonants, all of the short vowels that were given and the area that the student fell into where they um, missed two or more is the long vowel patterns. And that would be where the teacher would start the word sorts with the student, with this particular student. So after you grade um, and score each of the spelling tests, the next step is to group your students according to the spelling stage where they had the um, largest amount of mistakes and or where the, like the one that was um, the stage where they missed at least two or more. And you're gonna start them there, even if maybe they, um, let me go back and show you. So let's say for example, um, they missed, uh, one in this one, but then they missed um, two in this one, and then three in this one, you would start with final consonants because this is the one where it's um, the next column that they're working on. And then once they've mastered this column, then you'd move to the next column, and then you'd move to the next spelling stage. So if you look here, um, after you identify where students are at, you're going to list their names underneath the spelling stages and then start to think about how you could group students. And you can uh, think about these students in terms of who might be the best partners based on uh, their personalities and what you know about them. But thinking about partnering students up as um, best as possible. And if needed, um, students can also work in a group of three. And then what you're going to do is you're going to work with them on teaching the uh, how to play the word sort game whole class. So this is an example of a picture sort. The reason you want to choose um, kind of an easier sort with your students is so that everyone can participate for the first time when learning the game. And you would want to show them how to play. Um, as a whole class before you start having students do it independently uh, so that you can pull small groups. So the game looks like this, where the students have a pile of pictures. And, and this example, the students are working on words that have short O and words that have long O. So you can give them a little T-chart 
and put it in a slip cover um, so that they can sort the pictures on that t-chart. And then you're going to use a paper cutter and cut up the word sort in to the little um, squares and put them into a Ziploc bag so that the students can reuse these throughout the week. They'll do the same word sort throughout the entire week. And then based on how they did, you'll decide whether or not they're ready to move on. The accountability piece for the word sorts is having students write the words on their whiteboard. So you'll notice that each student has their own whiteboard and they're writing the words as they go. So the game goes like this. The student would start and pick up one word and then say the word. Uh, so for example, they would say rock and then they would put it under the side that it goes on. So they would say rock goes under sock because it has short O. And then they would both write, both students would write the word rock. So they would sound it out together. And then it would be the student's turn and the student would pick one and then sort it. And then they would both write it. So now I'm gonna show you just a short video of what it sounds like um, as the students are out, uh, sounding the words out together out loud. So you really want the students to say the picture out loud. So this particular picture was clock and then the students are working on the writing piece right now and they're gonna work together really saying each sound as they write. So they're working on their listening and speaking and writing at this point. Then when they're finished, they can read these words that they wrote. Um, so that will also incorporate their reading. Okay. Um, in addition to the picture sorts, we also have word and picture sorts, which include both words and pictures. So you'll see in this case, the students are sorting the op words and the og words. So at the top, you'll teach them what heading to put at the top, and then they'll put the, both the pictures and the words where they can see them, and they'll take turns uh, reading the word and then finding the picture that matches. There's also sound sorts for students who are working on certain sounds. So these students are working on the M sound and the S sound and differentiating between beginning consonants. So you'll see in this case, they're sorting their uh, words that start with M, they're sorting words that start with S and they're writing them on their whiteboard. These students are sitting side by side so they can also sit with the pile in the middle. And it's also a good idea for students who are working on their, uh, their sounds to provide a, some type of a sound mat. So I'll be providing you in the resources a sound spelling card mat that you can laminate for students and have available for them um, when they're working on sounds that they don't yet know. So here are all the resources. Um, basically, once you give the spelling inventory, you can provide students with these um, different word sorts that are available in th these three different books. So uh, if you click on the book, it will take you to the resource. So this resource uh, has some phonemic awareness that you could do with students. And then it moves into, um, for the word sorts, uh, beginning consonants. So the students can start with just working on the beginning consonants. And when they move into this book, it would be working on, um, this one's working on one letter at a time, whereas this one starts to incorporate four letters at a time. So let me show you. If you click on the book itself, it will take you to the PDF for the different word sorts. And then you can look at the table of contents in order to find the word sorts that you're looking for according to which spelling stage the students fell in. You can also just scroll down and take a look at them. So you can see these are working on beginning consonants with a student who maybe isn't as strong with beginning. You might just start with two 
and then do the other two. Um, so you kind of can decide um, if the students are able to handle four or just two. And then you'll see this is kind of a review of the different beginning consonants. Once the students have practiced, um, let's say they fell in this area, then they uh, can take this little um, quiz in order to see if they're ready to move on from beginning consonants to the next sorts. So you'll look through and you'll do um, how many of our sorts in order. And like I said, you'll do them for about a week. So students will work on one for about a week and then they'll move into the next one for about a week. Uh, so depending on how quickly they're able to learn these, that will determine how many times they play this game with their partner. Also, um, once you run out of word sorts in this area, you can go to the third book, which also has um, some short vowels and long vowels mixed together and also some controlled vowels. Here are the sound spelling mats that I told you about and I'll include them in the resources and then also the spelling inventory, um, the two different tests that you could use with students. And then here's the progress monitoring that comes after um, about every five to seven sorts. You'll see some type of a progress monitor that you could have the students do individually to check in it with them in order to know that it's time to move on to the next spelling stage. You do wanna track data um, with students so you can keep track of what the sort was that they did and that they mastered it. And then you move them on to the next one. You could also put dates here to keep track of that. So I really hope that you find value in using word sorts. And if you have any questions or are interested in receiving any feedback or support with word sorts in your classroom, um, please feel free to email me at laura.smart at OMSD. Okay, thank you so much for your time. I really hope that um, this works for you. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.